Hey folks, I have got another brand new 3D scanner to try out today. This one is from 3D Maker Pro and it's called the Mole. And just like their whale 3D scanner that I tried out not too long ago, comes in a really nice heavy duty case. So let's get into it and see what this new 3D scanner is all about. Now, of course, I can't just try out a new piece of tech without having a real project to use it on. So, many of you may know me for my animatronic Raven kit. Um, it's a DIY kit that comes with all of the components to build the mechanical structures and the feathered coverings for a robotic Raven. Um, a lot of people use it in haunted houses or I've seen some people put it to use in short films. Um, and it's been really fun to see what everybody does with it. But I have been planning for a long time now to work on the next step, which will be an animatronic parrot kit. Um, it's going to be in some ways improved and in other ways just different from what you've seen on the Raven before. And so with this new mole scanner, I'm going to kick off my animatronic parrot project. And the first step is going to be working with some pieces that I started a few years ago when I first settled on doing this project. So this is uh, the head and the body sculptures that um, I did in clay for this new parrot. And um, the body was done in a water-based clay and the head was done in an oil-based clay. I thought I was probably going to finish the sculpture and get it molded in about a week. Um, that didn't happen, it's been about three years. But um, the water clay dried out. Um, if you don't keep wetting it down, keep it hydrated, it just does that. I'm gonna scan this. We'll see how it picks up things like all of these cracks that came up in the clay as it dried out. And I'll be able to refine that sculpture, get it perfectly symmetrical, get all of my mechanics to fit inside of it perfectly by 3D scanning. What's cool about computers is that it can not only save a sculpture that was otherwise doomed, um, but we can also use the computer to get perfect symmetry on this. And so where I had started sculpting this by hand, um, and you can kind of see looking down the top that it's not perfectly symmetrical. If it was just a sculpture, that would be fine. But I think that because it's going to be mechanical and I want all of these joints to move really smoothly, it's really gonna help out to make both sides exactly the same. So to that end, I went ahead and detailed out one half of this. And so I'm going to scan the whole head and then mirror that side so that we have one perfectly symmetrical head to work our mechanics off of. Now this may not matter to you, but it's very exciting to me that the 3D Maker Pro software now runs on Mac. So let's get scanning. I'm going to take you through my scanning process, um, but I'm speeding up all this footage so that you can see the whole thing. I'm doing the body as a handheld scan, um, but I do have it sitting on the turntable to make it easier for me rather than having to walk around the whole thing. Um, it's doing the work of spinning and then I'm basically just worrying about capturing all of the angles up and down as it goes. So I'm uh, watching that screen and doing my best to capture everything. So once I'm done, I go ahead and pause it and it's going to put together the point cloud and then I will let it process the mesh and we'll come back and check on that in a little bit. I'm setting up the head as a regular turntable scan um, with the scanner on the tripod and you can see this little graph on the side shows you the distance of the object that you're scanning. So you wanna kind of get it into that excellent range. If you go up too far or too close, it'll turn pink. 
So once I have it positioned correctly, I'm gonna go ahead and start the scan. I'm doing this manually rather than in the actual turntable mode because I just found that it worked better. Once I get that first scan, I'm gonna pause it and append a second scan where I'm going to rotate the head to another angle, do another full revolution, pause it again, and append a third one so that we've got sort of the uh, three different angles that I'll then be able to merge together. And the way that I'm doing that is first I'm going to manually delete the turntable. Uh, you just, on the Mac, you hold control and drag out to select what you wanna delete, and then hit delete. And then I do that to each of the scans. And then once you have that set, you make them all visible and drag a primary one into this little box at the top and it'll do its thing. I aligned the first two and then I added the third one to it. And I did this all on the uh, automatic mode and I found it worked really well. And here's what you really came here for is the scans. So the body scan you can see came out really good. Um, I know it's not the easiest thing to judge, but actually a smoother surface like this can tell you a lot. Now, we can see in the cracks that it hasn't really gotten a lot of depth to them, which I wouldn't expect. It's, it's all about light getting in and bouncing back to the scanner. So with those really narrow crevices, there's not a lot of opportunity for that to happen. But um, I can see where they all are, and I can see all that kind of weird stuff up at the top where, um, my armature wire was sticking out. So you can get an idea of what kind of mesh you're gonna get from something like this. Now with our merged scans of the head, here's what we've got. Now you'll notice first of all that the eyes have nothing and that's because something that is very shiny and in this case shiny and clear is not gonna get picked up by most 3D scanners. Go ahead and take a look at the detail around the wrinkles. Um, kind of same thing as, as with the cracks. It doesn't have the full depth of them, but you can see where each one is. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually looking at all of these scans in ZBrush because I just find it to be a nicer way to look at things. And I went ahead and mirrored both sides. And now here we have a symmetrical head to work off of. And with that, I'm going to start uh, reworking it a bit, detailing it, smoothing out the parts that need to be smoothed out. And this is where I'm at so far. I'm going to keep working on this and I'm not going to 3D print it yet because I actually want to add the mechanics right into the 3D model before I get to that point. So we'll have more of this project very soon. So ultimately, what do I think of the Mole 3D scanner? Well, it's pretty good. There's a couple things I don't care for. This tripod, um, while I think it's got a really nice wide footprint, is not my favorite. It's really difficult to get the scanner on there because of the placement of the plug. You really can only get it to fit on in this direction and uh, just barely. So. I would hope that they, you know, make some adjustments to make that a little easier to use. Plus, when you actually take the scanner off of the tripod to use it handheld, which it does a pretty good job at, um, the cord comes out of the bottom, which is also where the flat part is. So if you want to set that down, you can't set it on the flat part, you have to set it on its side. But because it's a cylinder, it wants to rock around it's not a deal breaker, but it's not my favorite design choice. Now, it's a really nice looking tech product. It's got the clean curves, this nice rubber grip, and it performs a lot like their other 3D scanner, the Whale. Uh, really a very respectable 3D scanner. Uh, nothing too flashy fancy. It's not gonna give you million dollar results, but uh, I don't know what the asking price of this is going to be, but I imagine it's kind of in line with the other sort of consumer level 3D scanners that are out there. And um, I think the results are comparable. This operates much like the Whale and a lot of other 3D scanners in that it has one cable that comes out of the scanner that splits into two. 
So one is the USB to your computer and the other goes to the power supply. There's, uh, you know, some definite learning curve to the software, especially. I had to ask questions as I was figuring it out and uh, not all the tutorials are totally clear to me that there are certain cases where you need to uh, command click on something to add a, a alignment point and um, little details like that that you kind of have to figure out. But once it gets working, it's pretty good. I'm not an expert. I'm an artist who likes tech stuff. So I'm sure that there are people who can get better scans than I can. One of the things that I sort of understand as I'm going into a 3D scan is that I'm going to be doing some work on it later. So my needs are, of course, I would like to get every bit of detail that I can, but I understand that um, as long as I have all the landmarks, I can go back in and re-sculpt what's missing. It definitely fits within the range of consumer level 3D scanners that we've been seeing a lot of lately. And I've been able to try out a lot of those. I feel like I don't have a whole lot to say about this scanner, but I think that's because it pretty much meets my expectations. Um, I'm getting decent quality scans without too much fuss. There's a little bit of a learning curve in the software, but that's not a big surprise compared to other scanners that I've tried out. I think that the software is still in the growing stages, um, but it's better than it was when I tried out the whale and that was only a few months ago. Some of the things that I look for in a 3D scanner are the quality of the scan, meaning how much detail is it picking up, and what is the field of view that it has, because um, there are scanners that can see a wide field at once, but the quality, the detail level is really low. And there are scanners that have a really tiny field of view, but they also can see tiny details. Um, this seems like a pretty good middle ground. It's not an enormously large field of view, but it's not the smallest either. And the detail that you're getting for that is pretty decent. Um, I can't really complain about it. I always wish I could get more detail, but it's not too bad. Um, I've definitely seen worse. Have I seen better? Not significantly, certainly not in the kind of consumer level sub thousand dollar price point. I think that if you're looking for a good kind of general purpose scanner um, for probably I would say things between hmm, about fist size to bust size, I think you'd be pretty happy with this. So I'm happy to have it in my toolkit and uh, I'll be curious to see how things develop as the software improves, as people get their hands on them and start to figure out best practices. So thank you to 3D Maker Pro for sending me the mole scanner and I look forward to seeing what everybody else scans when they start getting their hands on these. If you want to see more of my animatronic parrot project, I've got more videos coming and uh, it seems like things are going to get exciting pretty soon. So stay tuned.